video is sponsored by Crimson Manifesto and DJ the Lazy Gamer. Hey guys, right before we begin, you know what I'm going to say. Step bar on screen. A lot of you are watching currently and aren't subscribed. Please do so. It helps out the channel a lot. Dinner with the Hyuga and more missions. What if Hinata was placed on Team 7, Part 5? Team 7 have just returned from the Land of Waves, resulting in a very proud Hinata and Naruto cheering and sharing a high five with Sasuke. As he tilts his head so his hair keeps him from having to make eye contact with passers by as his boisterous team celebrates their first successful mission beyond the village walls. And they certainly do look peculiar, as Kakashi continues to carry Neji who quietly mumbles to himself about whether he fears his honorary little sister or his uncle's wrath more, while Naruto somewhat sadistically teases him by reminding him of Hinata's threat every time the older boy seems to make up his mind that the answer is obviously Hayashi. Still, Kakashi Kakashi Ai smiles, happy to see the group's unity and dynamic finally started to take shape. As for a while there, he'd been a bit worried, but everything seemed to be hunky-dory now. Dynamic entry! A call rings out that makes Kakashi's blood run cold, but instead of finding himself as the target of a green-clad blur's high-speed flying kick, it is his Jinchuriki student who suddenly goes flying, right back through the village gates, as Hinata and Sasuke instinctively move to protect their teammate, the Uchiha's eyes spinning as he aims to place a kunai at the assailant's throat, while Hinata locks him in from behind, aiming to immobilize with a gentle fist strike to the center trucker point of the spot. But with speed and power that neither can react to well, their opponent is able to disappear from their enhanced sight. Or so it seems, as he merely flipped into a handstand in order to perform a spinning split kick which whips the wind aimed directly towards both Genin's faces, and they would have hit true if not stopped at the last moment when Kakashi's hand catches the foot bound for Hinata while Neji does the same for Sasuke, demanding to know why on earth he would decide it's okay to attack his cousin's team without warning. Rock Lee accusingly levels a finger at the long divot in the ground which Naruto's body created as it flew backwards, naively assuming that Neji is unaware of the rumors and legend of the delinquent who has played the village known simply as the Dead Last Demon. And since Guy Sensei and the rest of the team had been looking for Neji for the past two weeks, he was shocked to see him seemingly incapacitated and being tormented by the fiend, hence his stepping in. However, it is Naruto who dispels this misunderstanding, even before his angry teammates can showing his own ire burns much hotter as he somewhat wobbly flips back onto his feet, barking though exactly whose big idea it was to sucker punch him. But when he gets a view of Rock Lee, he freezes, not having expected to run into the boy he looked up to. Hinata tries to intervene and convey Naruto's feelings for him, lest she risk him flying off the handle. But to her shock, the boy gently raises a hand in front of her to stop him before praising Lee's kick is packing one hell of a punch. Lee seems somewhat off-put by this, and nervously apologizes with Neji placing a hand on his head to make him bow once for each member of the team he's insulted, before the two decide to take their leave. Before they leave, Lee asks Naruto if he and his team plan on competing in the next shooting exams being held here in the Leaf in a little less than five months. Naruto immediately responds that if it means a chance to take on a heavy hitter like him, then he better believe they will, causing Lee to nod resolutely at the challenge before hurrying Neji along, claiming their group has a mission. As they walk away, Lee glances back at the team, still getting an eerie feeling of having just come into contact with something far beyond his understanding in regards to Naruto. When the older Genin are gone, Kakashi clarifies that it's actually his choice whether the team participates in the exams or not, to which Naruto flatly responds that he doesn't even know what they are. He just didn't want that guy thinking he was any tougher than himself, which caused the team to all face fall and result in Hinata giving the lecture on shinobi ranks and the requirements to increase them. When this is done, however, Kakashi orders Hinata and Sasuke to go on ahead to the Hokage's tower without them since Hinata is authorized to get the report for him. As Naruto and he need to see how much the fine is going to be for the damage done to the village gate, the dojutsu duo leave reluctantly, now growing very adept at seeing their sensei's attempts to speak to the blonde alone, presumably about whatever it is he's been so tight-lipped about. But regardless, they proceed on, though Hinata can sense Sasuke's quiet aura become tinged with more frustration than usual, and can't exactly say she doesn't feel put out by whatever the secret is herself. Naruto complains that they shouldn't have to pay, and besides, he's broke. But Kakashi waves him off, revealing he just told Kotetsu and Izumo to port the building guy. What he really wanted to talk about was if Naruto noticed anything strange, and points out that kick he just took did a pretty massive amount of damage, chalking it up to Lee's near years worth of experience difference and his eternal rival's insane training methods. Naruto expresses confusion, and so Kakashi clarifies, indicating his technically always active Sharingan behind his cover, and explaining that he saw what happened. Between the moment of impact and Naruto landing on the ground, his body underwent an insane amount of regeneration and high speed, as his face has almost been caved in, and thus, he's becoming concerned that Naruto's seal is weakening stressing that they'll need to be careful and closely monitor his already unnaturally seamless connection to and use of the Ninetales Chakra, leaving the young Jinchuriki a bit anxious to see what this power could lead to. After about five days or so off to recuperate from their intense mission and the travel to and from the Land of Waves, the team meet early in the morning. 7 a.m. in fact, as agreed upon by Kakashi and the Yuga clan in interest of their air not seeming as unprofessional as her sensei. Thus, it is with no small amount of personal satisfaction that Kakashi, having worked on his tardiness, arrives to the training ground early enough to enjoy some light reading while sitting in his Guinean's favorite shady tree before they return to training and D rank missions later today. He even works through an entire two chapters of Makeout Paradise before the first student arrives, that being Sasuke surprisingly at 710. 
and a greater shock comes in the form of the studious Hugo member of the team not arriving until another ten whole minutes later, seeming very concerned about something. Wrapping up one last paragraph, Kakashi looks to his two present students and addresses the elephant in the room, asking both if they know where Naruto is, to which he receives a pair of very quiet no's, making him very intrigued on in what may be bothering his lieutenant. However, with a more pressing matter at hand, as they can't have a meeting with only three-fourths of the members, the Jonin declares that the morning warm-ups will be for the other two dojutsu wooders to track down their delinquent teammate. This draws a long sigh out of Hinata, as she moments about the blonde either being asleep or in the midst of something incredibly stupid. While Sasuke activates his Sharingan with some enthusiasm, interested to test his tracking skills against the next Yuka heir. As the duo dash away, their sensei smiles beneath his mask and gets into another chapter. Meanwhile, a montage begins of Hinata and Sasuke checking out Naruto's usual haunts. His apartment, Ichiraku, and even his favorite perch atop the village on the fourth Hokage's head of the monument are all a bust. However, that last location does give Hinata the altitude needed to catch a glimpse of red chakra near the outskirts of the village. Huffing at this waste of time, she grabs Sasuke and even burns the chakra needed to body flicker across the village of the passenger, resulting in his being a bit queasy and her being a bit tired as they arrive to find their destination as an alleyway, in which a lot of people lay unconscious and bandaged up. The only one awake among them is Naruto, who is frantically trying to rush and treat all their wounds so he can make it to his meeting, only stopping when Hinata roars at him, making him freeze and curse under his breath. The angel advances on the demon and treats him to another of what has become a pretty iconic sight, the small Hyuga scolding the brutish Uzumaki while he all but cowers trying to cover his ears and drown her out. Meanwhile, Sasuke inspects Naruto's opponents, who he assumes made the mistake of either harassing Naruto or not ignoring him when he harassed them, and is shocked when several of the faces are at least somewhat recognizable causing him to raise his voice in order to question the blonde, only to be drowned out as Hinata continues beating his eardrums as punishment. After two more tries, he finally yells, and both his teammates out of shock give him their full attention. Naruto, these aren't all civilians. How come you're fighting some of our former classmates? This revelation makes Hinata fume even harder, though before she can resume her deluge of words, Naruto scoffs and reveals his reasoning. They all tried to gang up and strung army out of my headband. I obviously told them the only way they get it is shovel where the sun don't shine, and then, well, you have two eyes. He finishes, adjusting the tie to his headband proudly, while Sasuke demands that next time something like this happens, he leave half his opponents to him, since he'd relished the chance to see how he stacks up against would-be Kenny. This statement for some reason is the final straw for the mysteriously stressed second-in-command of Team 7, as she suddenly turns an angry red and bellows at the two boys of boorish brutes, before forming a ram seal and body flickering away, ignoring the strain on her chakra reserves due to her frustration, while the two boys look to each other in confusion before taking to the rooftops after her. Unbeknownst to them, a pair of eyes has seen all of Naruto's actions, and now sets off to report to their superior. Arriving back to their training ground huffing and puffing, Hinata demands that Kakashi go ahead with whatever exercise he had planned for the morning without her teammates. Surprisingly though, the boys are only a few minutes behind her, arriving as Kakashi gently questions what exactly happened and why she's been so riled up this morning. A question Naruto angrily echoes. Reaching the end of her rope, Hinata finally vents, admitting that her father wants her to invite the team to dinner so that he can meet Sasuke and Naruto. There is silence from all three men as Hinata stares on, blushing expectantly, until finally, all three begin to laugh at various rates of hysterics. Naruto, of course, being the worst as he full on guffaws, Kakashi in the middle of the road in his chuckling, and Sasuke the most subdued as he tries to hide his amusement altogether. The heiress demands to know what's so funny, as this is a serious problem. However, Naruto snarks that they fought and befriended an s Frank missing ninja, a stuffy dinner would be child's play for them. But Hinata suddenly rounds on him, stopping closer for emphasis as she raises her voice once again, and declares that her father carries a lot of clout in the village, and all three of them are terribly uncouth, so if things went poorly, it could be the end of Team 7. Kakashi and Sasuke take some offense to this, while Naruto simply seems confused what this word means on top of the ones she'd used back in the alleyway he was also unfamiliar with. However, after a quick explanation from his sensei, Naruto scoffs and waves this off as he not as usual overthinking, pointing out that both Kakashi and Sasuke are actually from clans themselves like her, so he's willing to bet they know how to act fancy enough to seem cooped. And as for him, well he's an orphan delinquent, so if he suddenly acted all prim and proper, people would probably think he's up to something. Hinata blinks in recognition of the salient point, while Kakashi and Sasuke seem fairly vindicated, even if the point came from the most unlikely source. Deciding that it's best to let this sit with Hinata for a while, Kakashi does begin the day's training as the girl suggested, though when the sun reaches the zenith of the sky, he calls a halt to the action, telling his guinea that it's time they get something to eat, especially since they already seem tuckered out, and he feels like having some yaki niku Q. Suspiciously, Naruto asks if that means the Joni is paying for the high dollar meal, to which Kakashi eye smiles that of course he is, in a way that only tells the guinea that something is going on. Nonetheless, Team 7 make their way to the crowded barbecue shop, and it is only when they are seated that Kakashi explains himself, saying that this lunch has two purposes, and whoever can tell him both he will actually buy lunch for. 
Growling that he knew it was too good to be true, Naruto sees that he could have used this time for training, or better yet, gone to Ichiraku. While Sasuke taking a cue from his reaction as if it's to act as a cover while also being a chance to practice their dining etiquette. Nodding, Kakashi says it's correct on both fronts, and therefore, Sasuke eats for free. Citing how a noisy and crowded restaurant like this is an ideal place to have a secret conversation, since it would be impossible for eavesdroppers to make out one conversation amongst all the chatter. Hinata then gloomily sighs that they saw them too, didn't they? And while Naruto asks who she means, Hinata explains that ever since returning to the village, she's had a member of the branch family tailing her. Though she's not sure why, the only thing she's certain of is that the timing of this and the dinner's invitation it can't be a coincidence. Nodding, Kakashi says she's probably right that they're connected, but that's why they're here to practice, so that everything can go perfectly during the actual event. This at last makes the Hyuga heiress smile, and as the sizzling of meat and yammering of other patrons fills the air, she slips back into a role as calm and collected lieutenant, surreptitiously laying out her strategy for their upcoming Triple S rank mission, Impress Her Dad. Evening light bathes the Hyuga compound with the only sound being the distant chattering of cicadas, and not even a breath of breeze dares to disturb the stillness. Her home is the picture of perfect serenity, so why does Hinata feel more panicked now than when she faced down Gato and his thugs? Pacing back and forth, the future clan head runs through every possible way this dinner could go wrong, from Naruto chewing with his mouth open to Sasuke setting her house on fire. This worrying could go on forever, and so it comes as something of a blessing when Neji knocks on his cousin's door to inform her that dinner is almost ready. Letting some of her worry leak into her voice, Hinata asks if her guests have arrived yet, but with a sigh, Neji shakes his head, causing Hinata to guess what if they got lost. Shaking his head again, Neji protests that Kakashi's been here before, so if he's leading the boys, they should be able to find the place. What's more likely is that Lee has probably ambushed them again, maybe with Guy Sensei and Tense in his backup. Letting out a horrified squeak, Hinata moans that they can't show up here all scuffed up from a fight, and Neji nods vigorously, terror in his own eyes as he worries that Kakashi might actually invite Guy and the others along, so they'll not only be dirty, but it will mean three more mouths to feed. Cringing, Hinata spirals right alongside her cousin, asking what if Kakashi and Guy then get into the sake and start singing inappropriate drinking songs. Since she's seen sections of those makeout books her sensei likes so much, she knows they contain some pretty little material. Neji also frets that this would be disastrous, but with a semblance of sense, Hinata asks him why he's so concerned about this dinner, to which the elder Hugo replies that he doesn't want anything to happen to her team. He'd grown to quite like them during their time in the Land of Waves, and he also sees how much they care about Hinata, and that they make her happy, if not while driving her a little crazy, so he's not gonna let anything happen to take that happiness away. Hinata looks like she might cry at this sentiment, but Neji doesn't notice, already back to worrying. Thankfully, Hanabi comes to their rescue, as she boisterously barges into the room, announcing that Hinata's teammates and sensei are here. Scrambling to her feet, Hinata, followed by her sister and cousin, make their way down to the front of the compound, where Kakashi, Naruto, and Sasuke stand waiting for them. As instructed, all three are well-groomed and dressed in formal clothing, even if Naruto's is slightly faded, having likely been a hand-me-down from Kakashi. The Jonin even had an expensive bottle of sake in his hands, which he offers to Hayashi as a gift, much to Neji and Hinata's horror. For his part, Hayashi is even stiffer than usual, as he accepts the bottle, with Hizashi having to fill the social vacuum by offering to give their guests the tour. As the group of Hayashi, Hizashi, Kakashi, Sasuke, Naruto, Neji, Hanabi, and Hinata make their way through the compound, Hayashi seems to take an interest in Sasuke particularly, asking him about his living situation since the massacre. Sweating bullets, Hinata looks over to Sasuke, wordlessly begging him not to cause a scene. And though the young Uchiha's jaw is set, he mumbles something non-committal, but mercifully inoffensive, though not before giving Hinata a look in return that clearly says you owe me. Next, the Hugo Patriarch turns his attention to Naruto, asking the blonde a bit about himself and whether he feels inadequate being on a team of highborn dojutsu users. However, Naruto snorts that he doesn't much care about stuff like that, since the way he sees it, Hinata and Sasuke are just the first members of the gang he's building to crush that old geezer the Hokage. A heavy silence falls at this proclamation, with Naruto scowling, what? These guys can't take a joke or something? This obviously does not improve matters, and so as Sasuke balls with a fist to punch his teammate in the head for screwing everything up, Kakashi sets between them, placing a hand on top of Naruto's head and I smiling that he's afraid not everyone gets Naruto's unique sense of humor. Though from what they found, it's helped bring them closer together as a squad. Catching on to their sensei's plan, both Hinata and Sasuke nod along, calling Naruto a real cut up. Though it doesn't take a prodigy to know that cut is not the word that Sasuke is thinking. It seems Hayashi wants to say more, luckily about the blonde's reputation, but by this point, Hizashi's toy has led them to the dining room, where plates piled high with delicious food await them. Licking his lips greedily, Naruto beams that if this is the kind of grub that Hinata gets to eat every night, then he's gonna have to find a way to join her family. 
causing the young heiress to blush, while much more respectfully, Sasuke and Kakashi bow as Hinata had instructed them, thanking the cook for the food and then taking their assigned places around the table. The Hyuga do the same, with everyone beginning to eat, though Hayashi barely even looks at his food, his pearl-colored eyes flicking instead between the guests as he continues to pose each of them questions. Quickly, a theme develops around them, that being their recent mission to the Land of Waves. Thankfully, this is one of the things they had discussed during their lunch meeting, with each member having come up with a series of responses that Hinata had deemed to be to her father's satisfaction. Sasuke and Kakashi both play their roles commendably, with Naruto managing to do alright thanks to his genuine desire to help Hinata and decent skill at deception from his life as a street punk. However, Hayashi is not a stupid man and so continues to press the issue, the subtlety of his questions lessening with each new inquiry. Finally, the Hyuga head does away with games entirely, looking Kakashi squarely in the eye and asking him what rank of mission he took his daughter on. With a placid eye smile, the Joni answers that Lord Third assigned them a C-rank mission, as they agreed, but this only sets the usually impassive face of Hayashi Hyuga to contort in anger, as his brother rises from his seat, clearly keen not to be here for what will come next. Venom in his tone, Hayashi snaps at his Hachi to stay, as this is on him as well, before turning this anger on Kakashi and hissing that he is a liar. Angrily, Naruto demands to know where this stuffy old fart gets off calling one-eyed sensei a liar. But Hayashi barks at him to be quiet, and not very used to fatherly authority, the Jinchuriki quickly does. The Yuga head then reveals that he did some digging after they got back, and saw that their pay reflected that of an A-rank mission, so either Kakashi is lying through a mission or being outright deceitful. Kakashi bows his head, preparing to take the blame, but before he can say anything, Sasuke and Hinata both speak up, with the last Uchiha declaring that the rank was changed midway through the mission, so what Kakashi sensei said was true, while Hinata adds that the decision to keep going was hers, since she believed that they could handle the mission, along with it being the right thing to do. And what's more, she was correct. The two adult Hyuga are stunned, having never seen this side of their daughter and niece, but the silence is not a long-lasting one, as Naruto, Sasuke, and even Neji join their voices with Hinata, praising her judgment as the squad's lieutenant and expressing their willingness to follow her through thick and thin. After a moment more of consideration, Hayashi acknowledges that he can see that, a frown still on his face. Laying a supportive hand on his brother's shoulder, Hazashi urges him to trust Hinata, as the children do, and with a sigh, Hayashi admits that he does, and that he is proud of the strength of character she's shown, he just… You want to protect her. Kakashi finishes for the clan head, before adding that he does too, since each of his students is also a precious comrade to him. However, from what he's seen over these last few months, Hinata hardly needs protected. She is a skilled kunoichi and a truly essential part of their team. Exhaling deeply, Hayashi sighs that he can see that, and truthfully, he is grateful for the care that Kakashi has shown his daughter. And for that reason, he can probably forgive this Land of Waves incident and put a bit more faith in Hinata's abilities moving forward. A claim which makes all of Team 7, as well as Neji, Hizashi, and even Hanabi smile. After a brief father-daughter hug, it is time for dessert, and at Hinata's recommendation, it is cinnamon buns. As the much more relaxed dinner companions sit outside together watching the stars, Hizashi suggests that next week they should invite Neji's squad for dinner. But this is met by a resounding no from both Hinata and Neji, whose faces are matching shades of red as they imagine the havoc the youth-obsessed Joni might cause. With this hurdle cleared, it is quickly back to missions and training for Squad 7, with Kakashi determining a system that would hopefully keep his Gideon advancing at a steady rate and both strength and experience. Deciding that for every 10 D ranks the trio successfully complete, they will attempt one C rank, and for every 5 C ranks, he will see how the Hyuga feel about him taking the trio out on a B rank. And thankfully, both his squad mates and the Hyuga head find this acceptable, leading to his Gideon fairly quickly racking up more and more completed missions with the records over the next 4 months or so and culminating in a B-ranked mission that takes them to the Land of Snow, after the beginning catch a movie Kakashi's order in preparation for the mission. It features a famous actress who turns out to be a real-life princess, seeking to return to her country and reclaim her place as his rightful ruler, after her uncle's coup d'etat. If this sounds familiar, that is because this is verbatim the plot of the Clash of Ninja in the Land of Snow. However, the events would obviously have to take place in some really different ways, since the film simply couldn't take place in canon due to it being set after episode 100 of the original anime, which was all filler for one thing along with a bunch of other things that just don't fit the narrative of Naruto. There's a really decent video by a channel called Anime Sage detailing all this info in the vein of Dragon Ball University's why the Dragon Ball Z movies can't happen. If you're curious, I will have those linked in the description for you. Thankfully, with a stronger than canon Naruto who has even greater access to the Nine Tails Chakra, a tougher Sasuke, and a way tougher teammate Hinata over Sakura to back Higashi up, the mission is still going to be successful, and will take place almost the exact same as the original film did, where possible. However, we're talking about this because there is a development which we should focus on, and it's directly after Princess Koyuki's protectors are slaughtered by arguably the most realistic piece of ninja technology featured in the film for this time period of the world. As Koyuki's head retainer lays dying in the snow, saying his last words, Koyuki refuses to cry. 
But since his teammates have both made more progress than him with the White Light Blade and the Shuriken Jutsu, Naruto angrily sits down and focuses intently to prove he hasn't been wasting time either, praying that for once, the Mystic Palm Jutsu holds strong as he casts the healing over the man's most grievous wound. But as the usually green energy turns an angry red, Naruto suddenly stops, recoiling in fear as the man shudders before going silent and glassy-eyed. Koyuki, still in her pessimist face, simply accepts this as inevitable and orders the caravan to turn back as in the original film. But as she does, Naruto, ruefully having to know where he messed up, pulls the man's armor back to reveal that where he tried to heal him, he'd instead caused the man's wounds to rot and decay. In shock, he guiltily calls his sensei over to reveal this, and the Jonin grows even more worried about his student's future as they go on to defeat Doto and complete their mission. But that is where we'll be leaving this story off for right now. So, what are your thoughts after part 5? Do you like this slower pace to enjoy the setup of a Ginning team taking missions and going closer that I feel like the original series pretty much squandered? Are you ready for the Chunin exam's next part and the changes they'll feature? How do you feel about Team 7's current dynamic? And is this new development confirmation that Naruto is only fit to harm instead of heal? Be sure to stay tuned so you can find out next time. But before we go, I obviously want to thank our patrons, and if you'd like to help the channel out directly, get early access to videos and sneak peeks, and be listed as sponsors of the channel at the beginning and end of videos, then please consider joining the ranks of Crimson Manifesto, DJ the Lazy Gamer, Dominique, Knuckles OX, Pizza 15X, Aaron Winters, Narku, Normandy 1998, J. Ray, Omar Cousin, Shannon Roberts, Stephen Norton, Anthony Canales, Daniel Smith, Inurbriated, Infernate Beast 326, Jamal Hayden, Kevin, PJ9D3, Safe Serendipity, Sam Samuel Viveros, Vegito Gaming 78, and Zach Haji. But with that said, be sure to take care of yourselves and the world around you. And as always, go beyond plus ultra. And I'll see you guys next time.